Welcome to FemPower Health. Georgie here. It is the end of 2022 and also the closing of season three of this podcast. I still can't believe that um, I've had the opportunity to speak with such amazing experts. And after all this hard, hard work, I'm seeing the impact on women's health that even this podcast is making, as well as so many of the women out there who are frustrated with women's health and are starting to build their own companies. So I wanted to reflect on this year and a little bit on FemPower Health overall. So first of all, um, on a personal note, my son turned seven, a uh, sweet, sweet little guy, rambunctious, reminds me so much of me. And uh, I have to say, I wish my parents were still alive because I have so many questions for them. And also they would have really enjoyed my son. Additionally, um, from a health perspective, I have reached menopause. So I'm currently in the post-menopause phase of my life. And I won't lie, I was really nervous about this, and I hope I don't tear up, because um, what led me to this podcast was my four-year journey with infertility, which was unexplained until they figured out it was endometriosis. And I won't lie, I'm very fortunate to have my son, but I did always think that I might be that 50-year-old who randomly gets pregnant. Um, and has a sibling for my son. And that did not happen. I um, am 48 years old now. And I have to say that um, I'm okay. Uh, I hear the hormones change a lot as we age and we become a lot more confident with ourselves. And I will say that that is true. And I am okay with my son. And um, I, I, I feel so, so great. And I will say the funny thing is I was having um, a work party this weekend and I had a little bit of champagne. And as I was sipping the champagne, I could feel the hot flashes coming on. And it's not bad for me, luckily, but <laughs> I was chuckling because one of the things I learned in talking to these experts, especially the ones um, where we've covered menopause, uh, they do talk about, you know, we all have triggers and alcohol is a big one. And so as I'm sipping my champagne, but I was like, you know what, this is my choice. I'm going to have the champagne and uh, <laughs> have a little bit of hot flashes. On another exciting note this year, I also had the opportunity to attend the Women's Health Innovation Summit. And there I had the honor of facilitating a breakfast session with 50 of the um, female found of I should say 50 of the CEOs and founders of femtech companies. There were men and women there. So thank you to the men who also realized that change is needed. And what was interesting in talking to these folks is one, we know that this is a bad uh, time in the world right now from a financial perspective. So they are having a whole new way of looking at raising money. But what's really startling is to see that they have to spend most of their pitches with venture capitalists, educating the venture capitalists on women's health. And that says a lot about where we are. While it's 2022, we are entering 2023, Femtech still only gets about 2% of VC funding. And you can see here, a lot of it is people don't understand. There's been so much normalization of different things that women face, whether it's period pain. Some have even asked, uh, one of my interviewees said, uh, she was asked, do all women have the menopause? So as if it's a cold, like, do you catch the cold? Do you catch menopause? Um, and so it's it's a shame where the, the world is. And honestly, this is why I continue to do the podcast to raise awareness, but also to give a platform to these amazing innovators. And so thank you all so much for working so hard and um, continuing to innovate. Speaking of this innovation, what's interesting is a few years ago when I had started my fertility journey, actually in 2010, 
But about three to five years ago, I really got into trying to build something to support women's health. And we've come such a long way before it was just period tracking apps. And then it started to get into fertility. Now we're seeing so much with maternal health, Maven Clinic, um, billion dollar valuation, raising tons of money, and really now working with health inequities with um, maternal health. So that's really great to see that evolution. And we're also seeing a lot with menopause now. The challenge though, is now there's so many femtech companies that it's really hard to centralize and build an ideal journey for a woman, for the healthcare practitioners that serve them, um, the companies who are pro providing benefits to their employees. But what's interesting is there's still a lot of women who aren't even aware of some of these uh, femtech advances that have happened. And so a lot of them are also having challenges with customer acquisition costs. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens five years from now. We're already starting to see some consolidation. So if you're listening and you're a woman who's just trying to get educated on her health, please be aware that there's amazing companies out there who are trying to help you. And I do interview a lot of them. And so, you know, you're welcome to continue listening to some of those episodes with these femtech founders and uh, just a lot of really, really cool things happening. Like there's um, companies looking at diagnosing preeclampsia. There's another company looking at treating preeclampsia. And this is really important because being proactive about understanding this is critical to preventing what some women, many women can die of. There's really interesting innovation on being able to look at do mammograms from a more innovative way so that they're not as invasive. There's like a bra that you can wear that measures what's going on with your heart health. Um, a lot of interesting ways of diagnosing different conditions so that, because the thing is, <laughs> there's a lot of these conditions we don't even know we have. And so there's a lot of diagnostics that are out there. The challenge is we don't always have the treatments. And so this is where, um, a lot of the pharma companies are really working hard. Um, one of the pharma companies, Organon, they spun out of Merck. And I know that they're focused on trying to innovate in women's health. Bayer is another big one, GSK. And um, there's also Faring and several others um, who are now working on some of these treatments. And it does take a while, fortunately or unfortunately, um, because of dealing with the FDA, et cetera, but that's really important. The other thing that's taking a while is uh, getting some of the research findings out into the public. So I've heard data where it takes about 10 years from when research happens to when it becomes best practice in the healthcare system with doctors. But the challenge is doctors are having to constantly keep up with changes and with femtech specific specifically, I think it's going to be even harder because now it's also changing the way that healthcare practitioners are operating. So for the women who might be listening or even the doctors you may be like, why is she talking about the business side? Well, by day, I'm a healthcare consultant and I actually work with a lot of these biopharma companies. And so this podcast I do on the side, it is my passion project. And what's interesting is I'm actually helping some of these companies work through how digital health will help them innovate because what the pharmaceutical industry is realizing is they do have an obligation to help optimize our healthcare system. And I know many will bash the industry. And um, while you know, there have been practices that have been less than ideal. I can assure you that, you know, there's with our capitalistic society, it's really hard for anyone to do the ideal, right? So pharma companies have to make money and they have to make the money to not only pay the bills, but also to build, you know, find assets or I should say molecules that they can develop into a product. and 
then they have to do the research. A lot of the times those clinical trials will fail. And so they really do need the funding to, to be able to keep going. But I like that they're now looking at using their dollars to help innovate in digital health because the, you know, the doctors are really in a challenging spot. We really all are because it's so siloed and it's, there isn't really a central boss, so to speak, that can manage all of this. And so everyone's kind of doing it on their own. And I know there's people in the government who are also trying to fix this. Then we have the the payers or the insurance companies where we all may get frustrated. I know I do about things that aren't covered. Um, and when I get some of my bills, I just, I get really angered. And so I know everyone is trying, but it's so siloed. It's, it's making everything really, really difficult. So on to the non-business aspects. So one, you know, I had mentioned, well, actually this might be a little business aspect. So sorry guys, I just can't help it. But, you know, I'd mentioned to you that I'm now postmenopausal and we're really seeing a lot of innovation, um, innovative companies, I should say, um, trying to figure out how to help women deal with the symptoms of menopause. And the one thing that I am a little bit concerned by, and this is an underpinning, I think, in, in all of women's health, is I really appreciate that celebrities are leveraging their status to raise awareness. And there's been a ton of celebrities that are talking about their experience with menopause. And I welcome it and appreciate it. And I am not knocking all of their products because I haven't done deep, deep dives, but just the little bit of research that I have done and some others who are focused on menopause um, have also expressed is there is concern because, you know, right now um, we're, <laughs> the, the concern that I have is, are the products that they're developing um, truly helping women? And is it what's needed? And right now with women's health, and this is my call to action for anyone who's entering this space is I'm not hundred percent sure we need like another period tracking app. Um, you know, do we need another skin cream to help you with uh, menopause or perimenopause or postmenopausal symptoms? You know, what we really need is solving the root of the problem. And, you know, also are a lot of these products, the consumer facing products, do they have research behind them and how effective are the trials that have been done? And so I just would ask those who are using their, their status to, to enter this space um, to really think about the products that really are bring, being brought to the market and making sure they truly do make an impact. And, and I do agree. We all have different things that we like, so it is important to have competition, so to speak, and lots of different offerings to support women and their health. But uh, but I, I honestly would prefer that people come into this space trying to solve the, the root cause of the issues in women's health. And uh, as far as other insights and things that I learned this year, one, another is healthcare practitioners are really finding great value in the podcast. And that has been such a pleasant surprise because I originally built this podcast to educate women because I was so frustrated having been in healthcare my whole career, feeling like my fertility journey was impossible to navigate. And I thought, wow, you know, I had access to New York City and the best doctors in the world. I had access to any doctor and specialist and friend working in research I wanted. Um, and because I worked in healthcare, I had, you know, a lot of connections and it was impossible. It was just, it was anxiety provoking. And to hear that healthcare practitioners are finding value is, is um, it's really meaningful. But I think it also is testament to the lack of research, um, the way training is done for healthcare practitioners, that's really making it hard for them to be effective. One of the trends that I've been hearing from some of the healthcare practitioners is like, for example, those who are um, trained as OBGYNs, um, 
a lot of them are now really specializing if they didn't do so when they were originally going through their training. So for example, NAMS has a list of doctors who are now specializing in menopause. Ishwish looks at those who are trained in sexual health. And by the way, I commend um, Lindsay Harper. She is an OBGYN and she found she was getting so frustrated with the women, with herself, because women were coming in and asking all these questions about their sexual health. And she's like, I don't know how to help them. And she talked to her colleagues and they didn't know either. And so she developed a company called Rosie, and it's really taking all the subspecialists in the sexual health realm and putting all of their information into a single platform. And I, I commend her for, for doing that um, because sexual health is something that I don't know if we've been given the message that it's our right to have general sexual health, but a happy sexual life. And so for all the companies out there who are really raising awareness around that as well, um, there's another company called Laurels and I interviewed her as well. And for those who have ever tried to use a dental dam, not fun. And she's created like the sexy lingerie version of it so that it can really help uh, bring more pleasure to oral sex uh, for those who have various challenges around that. Um, I also found this year to be the year where I dug really, really deep into topics. So when I first started this podcast, I kind of did 101 type interviews. And this year I went really, really deep into the topics because I really love to find the needle in a haystack information and research to bring uh, to the forefront. And because I've been doing this a while, I've, I've just really gotten to know who these experts are in this space. And so I appreciate them making their time. So uh, when it comes to thyroid disease, earlier in the season, we covered the nuances of thyroid medications. And so I have covered, you know, if you're having a hard time being diagnosed, maybe these symptoms that you're experiencing could be a thyroid condition and how might you know that? And so we talked a lot about the, the testing that you can do. But this season, what we covered was the nuances around when you're taking medications, you know, and even with, with the blood work, there are all these parameters that these labs have. But when it comes to the thyroid conditions you may be facing and the symptoms, there's so many nuances to that. And so I had the opportunity of interviewing Rachel Hill, who is a very strong advocate in this space. And she talks about some of those nuances, which uh, was a really interesting and important episode. I also covered PCOS in a couple of ways. And, and the learning there is while you can't cure PCOS, you can reverse it. And so there were a couple of episodes. I know Fiona McCullough, who is an author and, um, and a, a clinician. She talks about some of that as well as Dr. Jerry Lynn Pryor, who is one of your favorite guests and one of my favorite guests. Actually, all my guests are my favorite because they're amazing. But those two experts did cover it. We also talked about if you have symptoms that are undiagnosed, could it be an autoimmune condition? So you can see this theme where we're having trouble diagnosing a lot of conditions and in some cases we do have treatments, as I mentioned earlier, and in, in a lot of cases we don't. And so that research continues to be needed. We also covered early menopause and um, POI. And that was a really interesting episode to, because I, I think a lot of people aren't really prepared for, you know, menopause, generally, but imagine if it's happening earlier in your life. And what was really interesting there is, is unfortunately some of the gaslighting that is happening when women are trying to go to clinicians uh, to figure out why they're having these symptoms. And again, I think a lot of it is just a lack of understanding. And so I really appreciate um, having that discussion. And endometriosis, wow. That is such an incredibly 
strong community. And I recently did an episode with Peter Wright out of Australia. And that within a week went to becoming my number one podcast episode of all time. I mean, we were talking, if you take all the downloads that I've had since the inception of the podcast and add all those up within one week, this episode still beat that. And what was so interesting is you know, I don't really do prep calls anymore for the podcast because these experts, they do a lot of talking and they really know their space. And there are some cases where it's it's someone where I hear a little snippet and I'm like, well, let's do a get to know you call. Um, and I guess with Indo, because it is something that uh, really brings a lot of, I guess, emotion, so to speak, um, because of the many, many, many years of struggles and the severe pain these women go through. I found two experts, you know, Peter Wright, obviously, was one of them. And because I had known so little about them, and I really wanted to make sure we covered these topics in an effective way, I actually did do prep calls. So it was PETA and Dr. Mike Armour, both of them out of Australia, doing some really great great research in this space. And I actually did prep calls with them and I recorded them. And both of those turned out to be podcast episodes. And so I am sure they will be on the podcast more to talk about this this really, really important topic. Um, Another couple interesting things I'm noticing as well, just because I talked about so many different topics and as a consultant, my job is always, you know, think of the themes and the root cause and and how do you put the pieces together? And to be honest with you, I think we are at the very, very beginning stages of understanding the gut microbiome and its impact on our overall health. I did speak with Dr. Edison DeMello, and he did a really great episode where we talked about gut health and just some of the things that he's been doing to help people who've really been struggling. And so some of us may walk around bloated. And I asked him, you know, to be honest with you, how do we know if we're bloated or overweight? And I think many of us who might think we're overweight might actually just be bloated. And so I think that's a really cool episode. But then when I talk to other guests, you hear how some of the root causes are, you know, the lack of a healthy microbiome, whether it's vaginal or in your gut. So we talked, uh, I I did speak with an expert on acne and, and some of the acne that we have could be gut health related. We talked about the vaginal microbiome and if it's out of balance, the impact of that. But also an interesting fact is that not all products are even tested on how they might impact the vaginal microbiome. And so there's a great company out there who is working on doing some of that research, focusing currently on CBD products. And so Pam Miles and um, her chief scientific officer were on the podcast uh, to talk about some of the expertise there. So if uh, you are interested in learning more, check out that episode. And you, you hear me talking about all these different topics and what you can do if you're like, well, I don't want to know about menopause, but I sure want to learn about sexual health. I've started to organize all the episodes that I've been doing into Spotify playlists. And so if you go to my website, fempower-health.com slash Spotify, you can see all the different categories that I cover and I will continue to add more and, uh, and, continue to interview on um, a lot of these topics. And so let's see, what else can I talk about? The other, actually, here's an important one, is the key theme that I see is how important it is for us to be educated about our own health. And this means having awareness about changes that may be happening, but What I have found so helpful with the podcast is the nuances that you need to be aware of and the specific questions that you have listed out and prepared to ask your doctor. And I did do an episode with two women who worked with 
doctors all over the country to put a book together on the foundations of women's health. So chapter by chapter, they go through different women's health conditions and talk about uh, um, like the, what the condition is, you know, general treatments that are around, things that are known, things that aren't. And I love that each chapter has a list of questions to ask. And I will say from a, a personal experience, I realized when I was um, driving around in the car today, how important it is to understand the condition, to know how you can frame the questions and what the nuances are within your own health that you have to monitor, because then it helps shed light on what's actually happening with you so that your clinician can help you more. And I say this because in, in a recent episode I did, I have um, a hypothesis of, of something that I'm going through and I realized the way that I've been explaining it isn't necessarily the right way to help my clinician figure out what's actually going on. And when I did this podcast interview and read the book to really have greater awareness about this topic, I'm like, oh my gosh, no wonder <laughs> I've had such a challenging time getting the right support. It's because I'm not explaining it right because I live with myself every single day. And even though I am my own advocate, I don't know what I don't know. And so I don't always know how to explain what's going on with me because again, I live with myself every day. And so I really appreciate these episodes because they're is such great awareness that I'm even creating in my own life. And for many of my friends who contact me with different things that they're going through, I both am able to direct them to episodes that can help them, but it's also informing me of the challenges that women are facing so that I can continue recording other episodes to help with those topics. So I invite you as you're listening to this, if you have a topic of great interest, maybe a health condition that you're struggling with, please contact me because one of my favorite things to do is to research that needle in a haystack doctor who can really help with different conditions that people are struggling with, but don't know how to get an answer. And so I, I truly, truly welcome uh, that feedback. And let's see what else, a, a couple of other questions. Um, tips too, is I did episodes on heart health and bone health. And I have to admit, even for me, it's like, eh, I don't have to worry about bone health. I'm 48. I could deal with it in like 20 years. And heart health, eh, my family hasn't had heart attacks. All good. When I did these interviews, though, what I realized is truly how not only everything we do from a young age onward has an impact on our overall health, we can't underestimate some of the things that could actually impact it, things that we think are normal. Like I was on birth control for a really long time. Um, many, many of us have been or are on birth control, and I am not at all knocking it because there's a lot of innovation, some of the non-hormonal non contraceptives that are coming out. But it, it goes to show that the ingredients in a lot of the things that we're ingesting can have an impact on our health. Heart health, um, you know, women's heart attacks manifest differently than men. And so oftentimes women are sent home saying they've had an anxiety attack. Um, heart health is really important uh, for even mothers. Uh, there's a, a lot of women who can really suffer, um, you know, because of the pregnancy and giving birth. And so, again, we, we, we have to be cognizant of all these things and not underestimate um, the lack of research and, and the impact on that for our health. And this is not at all meant to scare anyone. I think it's just foundational knowledge and we just have to advocate for ourselves to make sure we get the help we need. But like I said, it's also on us to be monitoring our health and being able to explain it in the right way so that our clinician is most successfully set up to be able to help us. So I think those are my thoughts. Uh, I've shared the business side. I've shared, you know, some of the innovations that are happening, some of the really cool topics that I've covered. Um, and there's many more that I haven't even mentioned in the in in today's uh, 
discussion, but I do invite you to check out that Spotify playlist. And if you haven't, you can follow Fem Power Health on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And that will give you alerts for when new episodes go live and other ways to stay in touch. So I do post on social media. I mostly post on Instagram. So on all the social media, you can find me at Fem Power Health and except on Twitter where it's Fem Power underscore health. You can also sign up for my newsletter. So if you go to fempower-health.com slash newsletter, and I do only send that out weekly. I do have a lot of people who request that I uh, create a newsletter just for their information. And I have chosen not to do that. So I only uh, publish the newsletter once a week and everyone's information gets stuffed in there. And so you can find out about the latest podcast episodes, uh, recommended Spotify playlists, news, what's coming on the podcast. And if you're loving the podcast and want to support keeping it going, because we do a lot behind the scenes to make sure that it happens, you can go to Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Fempower Health. And for, I think it's $5 a month, you can get uh, early access to episodes. And for $10 a month, you have the opportunity to influence what happens on the podcast, as well as, of course, getting early access to episodes. And if you would like to make a one-time donation, sorry, Patreon does not allow for that. I tried. I keep Googling to see if they've changed it. They have not. So Patreon, if you're listening, please change that. But if you would like to make a, a one-time contribution or if you would like to be a corporate sponsor, please contact me at info at fempower-health.com. So now I am heavily recording in for season four. And I have to say my editor and I, uh, sometimes I'll email her and she's amazing, Tosh, um, Tosh Taylor. And she actually, by the way, just developed a class. Uh, so if you are listening and you want to be a podcaster or are a podcaster and uh, need some support, Tosh has a fabulous um, class. So look her up. I think it's podcasthub.ca. So Tosh, I hope I got that right. I'll put it in the show notes. And um, so, yeah, so you can contact me if you'd like to, um, to support uh, the podcast. And again, back to season four. So doing a lot of recording there and uh, I mentioned that, see, I lost my train of thought. I, that happens sometimes. But uh, I had contacted Tosh and I'm like, I'm, I'm running out of things to talk about. I'm so scared. I don't know if I can keep doing this podcast. And then I connect with new researchers and new femtech companies and other innovative information and products that are continuing to come out. So uh, thank you all so much. Thank you to those who listen. Thank you to those who provide feedback. Thank you to those of you who are sharing the episode. I would like to thank my team, Lindsay, Jessica, and Tosh. Uh, you are helping me stay on track and being able to get all the things required to keep this podcast going. And last but not least, I would like to thank my mentors and the incredible guests and innovators in women's health. We need you. I know it's a hard road. Please don't stop. So happy holidays and stay tuned in January when season four goes live. Thank you all so much.